The Book of Mormon claims to be a historical record of the ancient inhabitants of the Americas. It purports to describe their belief systems, their politics, wars, and their economic system. There is a very detailed list of the money these people apparently used, including the denominations of their coins. If the book is historical, we would expect then to find these coins all over the place, like we do with Roman coins all over Europe and North Africa. Welcome, friends, enemies, and everyone in between to my channel, The Masked Mormon. I am in fact, The Masked Mormon. Why are you wearing a mask? Were you burned by acid or something like that? Oh no, it's just they're terribly comfortable. I think everyone will be wearing them in the future. If you are returning, welcome back. But if this is your first time here, I am a Mormon who used to believe in the truth claims of the Mormon Church. I did it all. I was baptized, I went on a mission, I attended BYU, I was married in the temple, and all the rest of it. I truly believed in the claims of Mormonism. Now, I explore some of the implications of Mormon theology, culture, and some of my own personal experiences and talk about it on the internet with you fine viewers. If you haven't yet, if you like what I do here, please press the like button and subscribe. Even leave a comment if you would like. I read them all and I try to respond to as many as I can. Like I said, today I am talking about money. We are all a big fan of money. We like it, we use it, we have a little. Some of us might keep it in a jar on top of our refrigerator and we would like to put a little bit more in that jar. But of course, I'm not talking about Washington's, Lincoln's, or Benjamin's. I'm talking about the money described in the Book of Mormon. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Book of Mormon, it claims to be a historical record of a people who lived somewhere in the Americas after having migrated from Jerusalem around 600 BC right around the time when the Babylonians took over the city. This group of people allegedly built a great civilization composed of two chief groups, the good guys, or the Nephites, and the bad guys, the Lamanites. This civilization lasted roughly 1,000 years, and at one point, the church taught that these people were the principal ancestors of the Native Americans. However, as the lack of historical evidence stacked up, the church eventually had to backtrack and change the narrative that, instead, these people were among the ancestors of the Native Americans. In addition to the history of these people, the Book of Mormon also contains their theology, their sermons, and conflicts they had among themselves. Apparently, these people had a very well-developed version of Christianity 600 years before Christianity was even a thing. The prophets described in this book taught of the coming of Jesus Christ and about the gospel of Christianity, all while teaching principles derived from the King James Version of the Bible, again, roughly around 2,000 years before the King James Version of the Bible even existed. Depending on who you talk to, this civilization may have encompassed the entirety of North and South America. This is also the view that I was taught when I went to church and seminary as I was growing up. For the longest time, the unofficial narrative was that these people sailed from the Arabian Peninsula and landed somewhere on the west coast of South America, perhaps somewhere in Chile. This is, of course, after these people apparently built the most advanced sailing ship that had, to that point, ever existed. In the process, they also developed technologies that wouldn't be invented for hundreds of years. As these people spread, they built temples, cities, and roads. They, however, didn't seem to run into any of the other empires or people who existed at the time. Like I said, it used to be believed that the people of the Book of Mormon spread over the entirety of North and South America. Initially, it was thought that the ruins of the Aztec, the Maya, and other people who lived here were the remains of these Book of Mormon civilizations. 
However, the lack of any physical evidence of Book of Mormon civilizations has caused believers to shrink the extent of their empires. One of the more prevalent beliefs nowadays is that the Book of Mormon people lived in Mesoamerica, Mexico, Yucatan, Central America, etc. Believers will try to match geographical features described in the Book of Mormon with real-life features to try to place the setting of the Book of Mormon. One of the most notable features described is a narrow neck of land that separated the land northward from the land southward. This has been interpreted as being the Isthmus of Panama. Other believers believe that the setting of the Book of Mormon is instead found in the heartland of the United States. This would include upstate New York and the Great Lakes region, where Joseph Smith lived. This setting would seem to match with several things that were said during Joseph Smith's time. This belief often coincides with the mound builder myth that was very prevalent in Smith's time. So why am I going into a geography lesson when the purpose of this video is to talk about the money described in the Book of Mormon? Well, the Book of Mormon makes several claims about the physical world that can be tested. If it is historically true, we would expect to see certain things. One of these things is the titular money system of these people. The Book of Mormon goes into a great deal of detail about the money that these people used. Specifically, they used a system of gold and silver coins of various denominations. This is described in the Book of Alma, chapter 11, verses 4 through 19. Quote, Now these are the names of the different pieces of their gold and their silver according to their value, and the names are given by the Nephites, for they did not reckon after the manner of the Jews who were at Jerusalem. Neither did they measure after the manner of the Jews, but they altered their reckoning and their measure according to the minds and the circumstances of the people in every generation until the reign of the judges, and they having been established by King Mosiah. Now the reckoning is thus, a senine of gold, a seon of gold, a shum of gold, and a limna of gold. A senum of silver, an amnor of silver, an ezrum of silver, and an auntie of silver. A senum of silver was equal to a senine of gold, and either for a measure of barley, and also for a measure of every kind of grain. Now, the amount of a seon of gold was twice the value of a senine, and a, and a shum of gold was twice the value of a seon, and a limna of gold was the value of them all and an amnor of silver was as great as two senums, and an ezrum of silver was as great as four senums, and an auntie was as great as them all. Now this is the value of the lesser numbers of their reckoning. A shiblon is half of a senum, therefore a shiblum for a half of a measure of barley, and a shiblum is half of a shiblon, and a leah is half of a shiblum. Now this is their number according to their reckoning. Now an antion of gold is equal to three shiblons. <laughs> it's pretty detailed, huh? But Joseph never really had to use it again, except in referencing a senine one time in 3rd Nephi, which describes Jesus' visit to America. Now, let's compare this to the money of a similar type of civilization, the early Roman Republic which persisted from around 500 BC to around 27 BC, after which it was reorganized into the Roman Empire. During the Republic era, here are some of the coins that they used. This of course changed during the Empire years. They were made of bronze, silver, and gold. You have probably heard of a denarius before, but another coin of note is the as... I, now I don't really know how it's pronounced. I don't know if it's pronounced as as or ass. I think the 12-year-old uh, part of me prefers the latter. <laughs> kind of like how, no matter what, I always snicker at the biggest dickus scene in the film The Life of Brian. But anyway, the Romans minted heaps of these coins, which were used all over Western Eurasia and Northern Africa. Their money served as a model for later currencies through Europe and through the Muslim world. 
In fact, hordes of Roman coins have been found all over Europe, the British Isles, Northern Africa, and even into India. This map shows the location of these hordes, with over 6 million coins spread over 15,000 hordes. The Roman world was vast. Here's a map of the Roman Empire superimposed on the map of the United States. The Roman influence was far-reaching. However, their money seemed to be even further reaching, extending far into the barbarian lands. And that is the point of this video. Though the Roman Republic and Empire are long gone, their coins are still all over the place. Roman coins are so common in Europe that they really aren't worth that much. In fact, you could easily buy bronze coins for just a few dollars. Coins are an interesting technological development because they are a very convenient way to transport value. And even with thousands of years of people repurposing the metal for other uses or even other coins, we still find Roman coins all over Europe. If the Book of Mormon people use coins, we should be finding them all over the Americas. This would be independent of the size of the Book of Mormon empires. The Hemispheric model, the Mesoamerican model, or the Heartland model of the Book of Mormon would leave a lasting impression that would persist till today. Now, most religions mostly stick to non-falsifiable claims, claims that cannot be proven false. Mormonism, on the other hand, makes testable claims. Its beliefs insist on literal interpretations of various scriptural stories. A literal Adam and Eve, a literal Great Flood, a literal Tower of Babel are all necessary to hold up Mormonism's truth claims. In addition to these, the Book of Mormon must be historical for Mormonism's truth claims to hold up. One of the heavenly messengers that visited Joseph Smith was supposedly Moroni, one of the authors of the Book of Mormon. It claims to be a record of a people that actually lived somewhere in the Americas. And apologists will try to claim that because we haven't uncovered 100% of the ancient ruins or explored 100% of the jungles of Central and South America, we really can't know for sure. But you don't have to dig up an entire continent to determine if a people were historical or not. A people as technologically advanced as Book of Mormon people would not have vanished without a trace. And one of the things that we would have found, perhaps long before discovering long lost cities, would have been coins. And there is a problem with claiming the usage of coins in the Americas. Pre-Columbian people did not use them. They had thriving economies, but they didn't use coins as a medium of exchange. Some regions used wampum, a system of strung together beads. Other regions used shells. Trade goods were often used as currency all over the Americas. For instance, in Mesoamerica, cacao beans were used as currency. Other people used maize, which is also known as corn, tobacco, or feathers as currency. Others used copper ornaments. Some used blankets, others tools or livestock, or furs that were used for trade. But one thing that they did not seem to develop were coins. Even though we don't have a sign that says, Welcome to Zarahemla, we would expect to find traces of Nephite and Lamanite civilization all over the place. Human civilizations tend to produce a ton of artifacts. When one empire or civilization is eclipsed by another, all traces of the first don't just vanish. People produce all sorts of goods. Buildings, clothes, tools, jewelry, pottery, graves, and lots and lots of trash. And when they are used, coins seem to be things that end up turning up all over the place. We would expect to see several other things if the Book of Mormon were historical. And I'll cover some of those things in other videos. But as a quick summary, the Book of Mormon should describe things like maize, potatoes, tomatoes, beans, squash, chili, vanilla, cacao, turkeys, buffalo, deer, raccoons, and so many other things. 
And one of the things that we should be finding all over the place are, say it with me, coins. <laughs> Even if the Spanish repurposed the gold and silver from the coins that they found, we would still be digging up troves of them wherever the Nephites and Lamanites lived. They would actually help us zero in on where their civilization was located. Digging up troves of coins would help us determine if the hemispheric model or the Mesoamerican model or the Heartland model were correct. But what are your thoughts? What else should we be finding if the Book of Mormon were historical? Let me know down in the comments. And if you like what I do, please press the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.